So that's chapter one. Chapter two is going to take that information and render it into an order of march for war and also lay out the camp. The Lord spake unto Moses, unto Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch his, by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. What is not widely known is that every one of the twelve tribes had an ensign, a banner, a symbol, and that symbol was suggestive of one of the signs of what the Hebrews call the Matzeroth. The Gentile label for the Matzeroth is the Zodiac. And don't confuse the fact that that is used by astrology. It also is used by astronomers as a convenient method of laying out what you might call the geography of the heavens. So when you speak of these constellations, obviously because we're in a pagan world, we tend to use the labels from the Temple of Dendera, which is an ancient Egyptian place where these things are recorded, the, the, what we call the signs of the zodiac. They're not 12, there's actually 48, for each one has three deacons and so forth. But the point is, those, those, those uh, arrangements of stars are, are, are universal in all cultures. They have different legends and la labels for them. The Hebrews, however, and we believe this was the original labels of them, were, uh, uh, re account God's plan of redemption from the virgin birth that we call, virgin we call Virgo, all the way to Leo the Lion. And it's astonishing to get into this. There, I, I'm not going to take the time here to get into this, uh, but it's an interesting study. And uh, we have briefings on it if you like. But the point is, each of the 12 tribes has a, a celestial la uh, 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 ensign. And uh, four of those are going to be very prominent for us here shortly. Lord speaking to Moses and said unto him, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard. In other words, every house, Judah, Levi, whatever, had a standard. With the ensign of their father's house, far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. On the east side, toward the rising of the sun, shall the standard of the camp of Judah pitch. Don't confuse that with the tribe of Judah. The camp of Judah is a grouping of three tribes, as you'll see in a minute. They have the standard of the camp of Judah pitched throughout their armies. And Nashon, the son of Amminadab, shall be the captain of the children of Judah. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were threescore and fourteen thousand six hundred. Those that do pitch next to him shall be the tribe of Issachar. And Nathaniel, the son of Zuar, shall be the captain of the children of Issachar. And his host, and those that were numbered thereof, were fifty and four thousand and four hundred. And then the tribe of Zebulun, and Eliab the son of Helon shall be the captain of the children of, Z of Zebulun. And his host, those that were numbered thereof, were fifty and seven thousand four hundred. So all that were numbered in the camp of Judah, that's those three tribes we just mentioned, um, all, uh, were a hundred thousand, four score thousand, six thousand and four hundred throughout their armies. These shall first set forth. So this group which is the largest of the bunch, by the way, is the first one in the order of march. If they're marching, these are the ones that go first. And these are the three. Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun together make up the camp of Judah. Many people miss this as they, if you come to the temptation, just skim through these chapters and numbers. You, you see, it's tempting just to zip through it and go on. You'll, you'll miss some, some things that I'm going to try to highlight as we go here. Let's go. On the south side now, we've gone, we've gone on the east side, we're moving out of the south side. On the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuben, according to their armies. And the captain of the children of Reuben shall be Eli Elizur, the uh, son of Shedir, and his host, and those that were numbered thereof were forty and six thousand five hundred. And those which pitched by him shall be the tribe of Simeon. The captain of the children of Simeon shall be uh, uh, Shalumiel, the son of Zereshadai. And his host and those that were numbered of them were 50, 50 and 9,300. Then the tribe of Gad. The captain of the sons of Gad shall be Eliasaph, the son of Ruel, and his host and those that were numbered of them, 40 and 5,650. All that were numbered in the camp of Reuben were 100,050, 1,450 throughout their armies, and they shall set forth in the second rank. So this is the second camp, the camp of Reuben. They're on the south side. When they camp, they're on the south side of the tabernacle. They are uh, second in the line of march, Reuben, Simeon, and Gad. Then the tabernacle of the congregation shall set forward. 
Now, this is not at war. This is just on the march. Obviously, the tabernacle is going to be somewhere. The Levites wouldn't be going to war. But if they're on the march, going from A to B, obviously, the tabernacle is moving with them. This is where they would sit. And uh, then the tabernacle of the congregation shall set forward with the camp of the Levites in the midst of the camp. And as they encamp, so shall they set forward every man in his place by their standards. Now, the, 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 we have the, the tabernacle in, in the center. We have around the tabernacle the Levites in three families, the Gershonites, Kohathites, and Merorites. Moses and the priests are in the south. Now, obviously, to be a priest, you had to be a descendant of, of Aaron, Moses' elder brother. So if you are a priest, you're certainly a Levite, but just because you're a Levite, you're not a priest, because you could be a, a Levite that's not a descendant of Aaron directly, and that would put you in one of the three families, Kohathites, Gershonites, Gershonites or Merorites. You with us? And anyway, that's, that's always at the center of the camp of Israel. Of, uh, Israel. Now we move on the west side. It shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim, according to their armies. And the captain of the sons of Ephraim shall be Elishama, the son of Amahud, and his host, and those that were numbered of them, 40,500. And by him shall be the tribe of Manasseh. And the captain of the shield of Manasseh shall be Gamaliel, the son of Pedazur, and his host, and those that were numbered of them, 30 and 2,200. And then the tribe of Benjamin. And the captain of the sons of Benjamin shall be Abaddon, the son of Gideoni, and his host, and those that were numbered of them, 30 and 5,400. And all that were numbered of the camp of Ephraim were 100,000 and 8,000 and 100 throughout their armies. And they shall go forward to the third rank. So that's the camp of Ephraim. We only have one more. Hang in there. The standard of the camp of Dan, the camp of Dan, not the tribe, the camp of Dan, shall be on the north side by their armies. And the captain of the children of Dan shall be Ahizer, the son of Amashadai, and his host and those that were numbered of them, threescore and 2,700. And those that encamp by him shall be the tribe of Asher. The captain of the children of Asher shall be Pagiel, the son of Akron, and his host and those that were numbered of them were 40 and 1,500. And the tribe of Naphtali, and the captain of the children of Naphtali shall be Ahira, the son of Anan, and his host and those that were numbered of them, 50 and 3,400. And all that were numbered in the camp of Dan were 100,000, 50, 7,600 and they shall go hindmost in their standards. So they're the last. So you've got four camps, three tribes each, and uh, the, t the Levites and the tabernacle right in the middle. And there are the numbers. Now, you're probably wondering, gee, Chuck, that was tedious. I'm going to show you something that, well, let's, uh, it'll be right. Well, I'll mention right now. You know, I have a theory that nothing in the Scripture is there by accident. Everything in the scripture is there by deliberate design, part one. Part two, that design always points to Jesus Christ. And one of the fun games you can play when you're in a small group uh, of people that are serious about their Bible is try to find something that violates that presumption. And uh, you say, here's a great one. I got all these numbers. What's that got to do with anything? I mean, you know, you, by now you're drowning in numbers. What do I do with those? I'll point out to you that God always rewards the diligent. So we'll look at something here shortly. These are those which are numbered of the children of Israel by the house of their father. All those that were numbered of the camps throughout their hosts were 600,000 and 3,550. But the Levites were not numbered among the children of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So they pitched by their standards so that they set forward every one after their families according to the house of their fathers. I might mention something else, by the way. You'll notice it said that Levites are not numbered. They're going to be numbered in the next chapter. Well, I, th I thought God said not to do that. It's, the context here is war. They're not numbered because they don't go to war. We are going to number them two different ways. Those that are one month older and those that are 30, between 30 and 50. And we'll see that in the next chapter. So you need to, often there is a generality in the scripture, and then it's followed by an exception. So don't, don't let that throw you. But, uh, okay. So the order of march is pretty straightforward. We have the, the camp of Judah, which is Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. Then the camp of Reuben, which is Reuben, Simeon, and Gad. Levites right in the middle with the tabernacle. And their numbers you don't know yet. That's coming in the next chapter. Then Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin is the, is the camp of Ephraim. So you really like, you got battalions and companies, sort of, if, you're, if you, you want to look at it regimentally. But you also have these numbers. Are those numbers meaningful? I think they are if you put them in the right groupings. You know, we, we have, all through the book of Numbers, we have types. I warned you about that. This is one that's coming here. You're going to have manna before it's all over. You've got brazen, the brazen serpent. 
That's one of the strangest ones in the Bible. You have waters from the rock and so forth. There's others. Let's take this one, the camp of Israel. I suggest that every detail in the scriptures there by design. And the question we're going to address is what could be hidden behind these numerical details of the camp of Israel? Jesus himself said, the volume of the book is written of me. And uh, he said that in Psalm 40, verse 7. It's quoted in Hebrews 10, 7. So here are these four camps. Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. Reuben, Simeon, and Gad. Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin. Dan, Asher, and Naphtali. And we have their numbers. If you add those numbers, you will get the population of each of the four camps. And we're not through yet. What do you, you say, G-check, what do I do with that? Well, let's back up here. The tabernacle is in the middle of the camp. Around the, ta- around the tabernacle, you have the Levites. The Kohathites, Gershonites, Merorites as the three families, but Moses and the priests, which are the core group, on the east side. The east side is, of course, the key side. Now, I have no idea how much space they took to camp. We'll learn later that there's about 22,000 of them that are more than a month old. So, now, if you take that number plus their wives and families and whatever, that, that, that you have two or three times that, whatever, that, that number of people is not a small place, right? But that is the camp of the Levites. And they're the reference point for the rest of the camp. Now, you're going to need to follow me here. You've got to pretend you're Jewish. You, uh, you do understand how hard the rabbis try to keep what they believe the law is saying. They, we often accuse them of splitting hairs. But they try very hard to do what it literally says. We could learn some lessons from them, perhaps. The camp of Judah was instructed to camp east of the Levites. That sounds simple, but it's not. The camp of Reuben was instructed to camp south of the, of the Levites. Well, no problem. This, if you're going to be strictly obedient to the instructions of the Torah... That denies you the opportunity to camp southeast of the, of, the, of the tabernacle, of the Levites. Because if you're southeast, you're not east or south. You're in between. And uh, only the cardinal directions are ordained for the t- camping. So you have to figure out how wide the Levites are camping and stay within that range if you're going to stay east of the Levites. Do you follow me? Now... And your length, then, you take proportional to whatever you need for population. So here's the, here are the Levites. The camp of Judas on the east side, their symbol is the lion, incidentally, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And so they can camp as wide as the Levites have staked out for themselves. As long, whatever that is, they can, as long as they're east of that, they're obedient. The same thing, likewise, Reuben. His symbol was the man, incidentally. So there again, he, they can camp as wide as the Levites have staked out, no wider, and they take whatever depth they need for their, for their people. If somebody tries to camp between these two, he's neither east nor south. That's forbidden. Hmm? So likewise, okay, we have these four zones, southeast, southwest, northwest, northeast, that would be in effect prohibited. Ephraim is on the west side. His symbol was the ox, the symbol of service. And... Uh, then we have on the north side the tribe of Dan, which ultimately became the eagle was the symbol of the tribe of Dan. And we have the four camps of Israel. Now we add to this the fact that we know what the populations are. We don't know their absolute populations, but we have relative figures. In other words, whatever the number going to war, I think would be reasonably statistically indicative of what the total population is. We have about 186,000 in Judah, 151,000 in uh, Reuben, the camp of Reuben. And we have about 108,000 in the, in the camp of Ephraim and about 157 uh, in, the, in the camp of Dan. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to embark on a magical helicopter. Outside, I've got parked a special jet ranger, and this one's a very unusual one because it's also a time machine. So we're all going to, in our mind's eye, get in this helicopter, and as we fly over to Israel, we're going to crank it back about, what, 4,000 years? And uh, three thousand some, and uh, uh, and we're going to approach the camp of Israel from the east side. And as we approach the camp of Israel, we'll see, of course, right in the center of it, the tabernacle and the Levites. But uh, as we begin to appreciate, this is basically a sketch 
of the camp of Israel made to scale. I'm using the tribe of the, the area of, of the Levites as my unit, and uh, whatever that is, um, the length, the proportions of the arms will be proportional to the populations. The largest one is to the east, 186,000 units, say. The shortest one to the, to the west. And the other two nominally about the same. And what do you see there? You can't escape it, can you? This is probably what Balaam saw from the mountains of Moab when he was going to curse Israel. We'll get to that in Numbers 20 and fall. But uh, I think this is kind of interesting. You see, if you pay attention to the text... I don't think there's probably one Christian in a hundred that realizes that there is a sketch of the, fr fr an aerial view of the camp of Israel tucked away in the second chapter of the book of Numbers. And uh, that may mean a lot to you, it may mean nothing, but I think it's... Now something else, by the way, I haven't, I haven't highlighted here, the four labels on those four camps are the ox, the man, the eagle, and the lion, which are the same faces that you see on the cherubim around the throne of God. Whether you're in Isaiah 6, or Ezekiel 1, or Ezekiel 10, or in Revelation 4, 5, whatever. The cherubim, the seraphim, call them what you like. Those same four letters. And it's interesting that those same four symbols typify the four Gospels. Matthew presented Jesus Christ as the lion of the tribe of Judah. He was Jewish. Luke was a Gentile doctor. He presented him as the son of man. He emphasized his humanity. Mark's the only one of the three that does not put a genealogy in because he's presenting him as the source of service. And uh, you don't care about the pedigree of a servant. And of course, uh, John presents him as to who he really is, the Son of God. But uh, so those are common uh, labels for those four Gospels. I think there's something far more fundamental going on here. But when God looks down on, uh, down on the camp, he sees the t tabernacle right in the center, and he sees a presentation of his plan of redemption before our eyes.